Hi, Chris Fletcher here. Before we get this mini episode started, I just wanted to make a few quick Ostium related announcements. The first episode of season two will be available January 14th, 2018, and hopefully available for our Patreon patrons sometime earlier in December. So if you want to get that season two premiere early, consider becoming a patron. Our Ostium store is now up and running on Redbubble. You can go to redbubble.com and type Ostium Podcast in the search bar or follow a link on our website, ostiumpodcast.com. The first book of Ostium is now available on Amazon in ebook and paperback. It is all 10 episodes from season one, as well as the mini episodes, plus a few bonus mini episodes. It also features all the artwork by our brilliant artist, Sarah Warren, including the covers to each episode, illustrations, as well as some bonus sketches. The ebook is available free to our patrons at the $5 level. If you haven't already, please consider giving us a review on whichever podcast app you use to listen to Ostium. We really appreciate it. And if you feel like you still need more Ostium in your life, you might consider joining our Patreon for as little as $2 a month and you'll get a new mini episode every two weeks, plus access to the many mini episodes and other bonus materials already available on our Patreon. And finally, if any of you will be attending the PodCon in Seattle on December 9th and 10th, our very own Georgia McKenzie, the voice of Monica, will be attending and maybe bringing some Ostium goodies with her. So if you'd like to meet her and say hi, and possibly pledge your undying devotion to the show, shoot us an email at ostiumpodcast at gmail.com. Okay, so here we are recording a Ostium mini episode about the music, which is yeah. pretty much all you. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm calling this the season one musicology. Sounds so good. So hopefully we can do one of these every season. Okay. So for this one, we're going to focus on the music from the first season. Yes. We may give a okay. hint about what's coming next. Sounds but... good. Okay. So what got you into music? Uh, I've been a music fan my entire life. I think um, when I was in kindergarten, this kid uh, came in, John Loesch, I believe his name was, and he had a violin, and he came in and he played the theme from Star Wars, and so I was like, ooh. I want, Which I want, one? The main, th- main theme? The main theme from, yeah, from Star Wars, and I was like, wow, I want to do that. So I went home and I said, hey mom, I want to... Um, play Star Wars on the violin. On the violin? Yeah, on the violin. So you decided yeah. to go with a really hard instrument? Yeah, to, to yeah. Me. yeah, exactly. Expensive and, and hard. <laughs> expensive and, and, and hard. And so uh, she said, well, we don't really play music in our family, uh, but she says, fine, we will rent you a violin. And, oh, um, so you were the first music yeah. guy of the whole bunch. Yeah, oh. so I played uh, with this, you know, learned from Suzuki Method for a while mm-hmm. there. Played a little violin, a little piano, uh, and then uh, didn't do anything with it for a number of years. And then maybe fast forward 10 years, uh, when I was about 14, 15, uh, got into the Beatles and uh, said, oh, this is, I hear piano again. We have a piano at home, so why don't I, you know, work on learning that? So that's, it was really the Beatles when I was in a teenager that got me. Did you know Jake likes the Beatles too? I heard about that. It's kind of weird, huh? It is a little weird. Yeah, I don't know. So what about, um, what about when you started writing music? Started writing music. Yeah. So, uh, probably uh, right about that same time when I got into the Beatles, I got into the Rolling Stones shortly thereafter. And, um, when I was 14, 15, 16, my brother, my best friend and I, made a band that wasn't a real band, but we pretended that we... Do you have a name? Yeah, it's a stupid name, but yeah. Oh, no, I want to hear it. It's called the Metal Destroyers. Mm. (laughs) And uh, we were supposed to be, like, in the way that the Rolling Stones were a bad boy version of the Beatles, we were a bad boy version of the Rolling Stones, the Metal Destroyers. So really bad boy. Really, really, (laughs) The Beatles. (laughs) And so we we came up with a discography. We had uh, all their albums and everything uh, that they had gone right along the same time as the Beatles and the Stones. And then we said, hey, we should uh, start recording all these albums. So we just, uh, whenever we got together, we would mess around and make up this uh, really silly old music. And uh, that, I think, got me into writing I remember uh, doing a song on the piano. It was like... Was it because you thought that you could do these songs better? Or yeah, just because it was fun. It like, seemed like, you know, <laughs> hey, they're having fun, so mm-hmm. I want to do that. Yeah. I remember this funny uh, 
uh, song that we came up with that we actually took the um, Disney movie um, Never Cry Wolf and we took the wolf the wolf sounds off the soundtrack. We recorded it with a four, four track, the howling, right? And uh, we put it in as a background track and we had some like rain sounds or something. My brother and I, we wrote this song called Alaska. And uh, I played it on the piano and it was just very mournful, like epic kind of soundtrack you know, ballad. for the yeah. James Mitchell ba- novel. Ba- <laughs> sure, yes. <laughs> and uh, so that was kind of like one of the more, you know, uh, symphonic, epic sounding mm-hmm. things I'd done at the time. And then I went away to college and I was like playing all my old Mel Destroyer songs for uh, college roommates. And this girl, uh, Christy, she said, that that sounds exactly like October by U2. Oh, and, no. And I've never heard that song, actually. Sure and, yeah. you have. <laughs> and she's right. It does sound quite a bit like it. So. But you really hadn't? I re- honestly, <laughs> honestly had not. I knew some U2, the big, you know, popular ones in the mid-80s, but uh, didn't know that one. But anyway, so that was kind of interesting. What about, so when you when I approached you for writing music for Ostium, mm-hmm. and you decided to start writing, whatever day that was. Right. What did you begin with? How did you get started? So what was funny about that was... Because uh, I don't think I gave you any cues. Really no, anything, no. Right? It was just, hey, I want you to do the music. Just do, do music for Ostium. Do, yeah, I do, do the writing, you do the music. And I thought that was really, uh, it was a great challenge. I was like, oh, this, this sounds awesome. Um, I was just trying to think, okay, what, what do I like from film music? What do I like from soundtracks? And I've always been a fan of uh, horror or science fiction uh, films. And I liked, I always liked that John Carpenter, you know, did his own music and as well as writing and directing. And so for some reason, I was thinking John Carpenter. And I think there have been a lot of movies recently, like It Follows and... Um, I can't remember the other ones right now, but uh, that have gone back to that early 80s synth sound that uh, that John Carpenter was so uh, famous for. So I think I, I was thinking of something like that, and I said, like, well, yeah, I should do like a kind of synth uh, heavy thing. And uh, so I started coming up with the, uh, the music that was going to go in, into the first uh, season, and then... So we're recording this at the Davis Public Library <laughs> in one of their study rooms, <laughs> in case you guys wonder. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll go back like a paragraph or something. Yeah, no, if you remember. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, well, what was funny about that was that... Uh, we'll just say we'll fix it in post. Okay, we'll, we'll Every we'll, podcast we'll listener, they never do. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll fix it in post. I'm, I'm winking right now, of course. And so. Um, but... Uh, so anyway, I started recording uh, some synth pieces, and then um, the show Stranger Things on, on mm-hmm. Netflix came out probably about two weeks after I started recording the uh, music, and it was like, I felt like exactly the thing. Like, they were copying all the same people that I was Good, because co- I, I really love that opening theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like, oh, uh, okay. It kind of validated my... Which was good, though, because I hadn't watched it yet. Didn't okay, that's cool. This year, so. <laughs> I felt it validated my choice of what I was copying. So, you know, like, even if you were writing the Stranger Things, yeah. I didn't know it. I just thought <laughs> yeah, it was good and music. <laughs> and I didn't know it you know, at the time until afterward. But um, anyway, so... Yeah, that's kind of the, the story of season one music. How did you decide how long you wanted to make them? Because I don't think I, I didn't tell you anything like that. Yet. Uh, yeah, so, well, that, maybe I might have said like thirty seconds. I think or you, yeah, or whatever. I, but I think at the beginning I was just yeah. just kind of doing stuff and just see how long it goes. It's funny that you ask about length because um, whenever I write music, if it, like a pop uh, music uh, pop song or something, it almost always comes out to be 90 seconds it's just mm-hmm. i think it's like in my my <laughs> dna that uh I, that must be like the the amount of time where the melody develops itself and then repeats because of all something. the beatles yeah, yeah. those short songs it, it could be, <laughs> right so um uh these i think i did one that was about a minute and then but i felt okay this is going to be difficult to sustain if i don't really know where i'm going and then i think i talked to you and you said well mm-hmm. We have these little music breaks, so why don't you do them for about thirty seconds? And that actually really helped me to have a sense of how much uh, time you wanted, because then I could, uh, you know, yeah, engineer it or, or reverse engineer mm-hmm. it to that. So that was helpful. So when you get started writing a piece, do mm-hmm. you ever feel overwhelmed by all the choices that you have? Like you can pick any instrument you want and That's- just use it. That's the fun part. Like I like uh, the, the best part of writing music is 
is not knowing where you're going when you're starting. It's a lot like writing probably, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just sort of uh, one sound suggesting another. So you just let it kind of flow. Like let it flow. Improvisational type of thing. Right. It's exactly actually like writing. It is, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, one thing with music, I think you can, especially if it's something that's kind of got a, you know, darker uh, tone to it, it's easy to, to kind of box yourself in into like, you know, the minor scales and things like that. And so I think that's always a challenge if you don't want everything to just be arpeggiated minor chords and it's going to sound the same and some of them do sound the same um but yeah so i think i think you're always trying to like come up with something quirky or different and uh some are just have bizarre sounds in them and things so like you can that. expect like a little pickle little piece and you do yeah, it. yes yeah. <laughs> just pull it out yeah and I, maybe kazoo do you have a kazoo? I do have a kazoo, but I'm not going to use it. That's the right moment. Yeah. No, it's too... Uh... So when you're working on a piece, yeah. when do you know it's done? Mm, when I Is it to... ever done? Yeah, when I get to 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right, no. you're just like, done, next one? <laughs> it's it's Yeah, they're, they're kind of never, like, you know, yeah. Because you can build so much with you the can, layers you can and always, different instruments. Right, and... right. One fun way to that you can go about writing music on a on a computer nowadays is you could. By the way, know, that distant rumbling is a library cart. Just, it is. Yeah, it's not thunder. <laughs> <laughs> the distant uh, is that a Ray Bradbury story? Uh, about the, the, of, no, the distant sound of thunder. The distant death. sound of the library cart. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the uh, the like one one way you can go about writing music. Uh, for you know for a score or something is you can play it as a piano piece just you know two-handed piano piece and then after you've recorded it as a midi information you can you can my phone <laughs> okay you can uh go back in it. and reassign the different uh, voices to different instruments so you can kind of create a uh you know orchestral performance that way though that's kind of a cheating uh, method but uh, that that works you can do that or you can do you know different lines separately and actually literally you know accompany yourself so but then do you just get a feeling like okay i've done i feel this is ready uh, yeah yeah maybe. i think i think there's a like, you want to keep uh experimenting to the point of where it's diminishing returns where you feel like you're you're muddying the waters instead of you know you're not making things more clear. You're, you're just, uh, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to go with the, the ranges. So what's the shortest piece you've ever done, and what's the longest piece? Okay. Uh, this could apply to Austin or, or video just, music, yeah. Okay. Uh, the shortest piece and the longest piece. I used to be in a jam band, so oh. the long <laughs> is probably pretty long. Was like jazz, or was it? Or? Uh, there was some jazzy elements to it, mm -hmm. but I think it was just, uh, it was kind of like a fish kind of band uh -huh. or something, yeah. Um, so yeah, when you were doing things at the uh, performances of the fair or, or the uh, market, farmers market. Yeah, uh, that was a different band. Okay. This is yeah, this it was a band called Westwind. I was in for a while, and so I was the guitar player for that band. Uh, so yeah, there've probably been I don't know half hour pieces or something. <laughs> I don't know how good they were. Oh, uh, and, noodles around on a solo, <laughs> right? Were you the solo guy with it? I was. I was for a while the solo guy. Yeah, um, and then short. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I probably uh, 15 seconds or something. But okay. I, but I think you've kind of set me a challenge here. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I've, it's a question I forgot to ask. Right going way back to the first band, what was it the metal? The Metal Destroyers. Does any music yeah. survive? Oh, yes. There are quite a few uh, of their songs on oh, tape. I might have to, to, I might have to clip give you one. Yeah. Sure, fair enough. I could give you Alaska and we could do it so <laughs> side by side with uh, October. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Well, we don't get rights for that, though. That's true. Yeah. Unless we play dumb. <laughs> was that what album was that October from? Uh, this is wasn't Josh Archie, was it? Oh, no. Okay. Though it is on the, uh, I just heard it again because it's on the uh, 30th anniversary. Okay, well, just because they it's just did their, their reunion tour thing, mm -hmm. I think it was all the Josh Archie stuff. Yeah, going, yeah, it's on one of the. So, what do you like to listen to music wise? Other uh, than the Beatles. Right, yeah. So I, and the Rolling Stones. I love the Beatles, all <laughs> the Rolling Stones. Um, I, my little. Uh, way that I think about music is if it was written before 1990, I'll say 1990, it was written before 1990 and was popular on the radio, 
uh, it has to go out of my way for me not to like it. And then kind of the opposite tends to be true also. But that's just uh, a product of when I was born, I think. Uh, so as far as pop music goes, yeah, kind of like, you know, the older 60s, 70s, 80s, pretty much, you know, I, I like a lot of it. Uh, after that, uh, there's a lot I like, but a lot I don't like also. What do I like? Um, I really do pretty much like all types of music. I like to kind of push myself into experimenting with and playing different types of music. Um, I've never been a big hip hop fan. You know, there's some, some pieces I like, but, uh, new country, I'm not as much of a fan of as well, but, uh, um, yeah, you know. And then I think the last time I saw you, whatever it was, three months ago yeah. or something, you were doing a classical music odyssey thing, weren't you? Where you were going like alphabetically through composers or indeed, something? Indeed, <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. So, so this happened. Um, I, uh, am not by any means classically trained. I've taken like one or two music classes. Um, uh, when I was in college, but I've always loved classical music and wish I knew more about it. So, um, I've whenever a, like so when a, you were lying on the violin, you weren't doing classical pieces as much. Oh, I, I, I was, <laughs> but when I was a kid, yeah. uh, it was uh, Suzuki stuff. So it was like mm. lightly row and, mm. you know, um, go tell aunt Rody. Back. <laughs> I think, uh, Beethoven wrote that one. <laughs> um, and, uh, so anyway, so when I listened, when I read a, uh, a book, like a, a biography of a, of a pop star or something, Paul McCartney biography. I, ever since I was in my teen, teen years, I'll read the book and then I'm sure a lot of people out there do this also, listen to the uh, entire catalog of that person as I'm, mm -hmm. you know, reading the book. And so like Paul McCartney listened to all the Beatles and all the solo McCartney stuff. And I've always done that and I, I like doing that. And so I was thinking, you know what, I should do that for classical composers as well. Um, and I decided to start with Mozart. So about a year ago, I just read like I think 10 biographies of Mozart and listened to his entire Kershaw catalog, catalog. Wow. yeah right and uh as I go it's, it's been a fun process because I've heard a lot of his music but by no means all of it and he's got some very profane lyrics on some of it <laughs> there's, there's some very dirty German <laughs> he's a dirty little boy um and uh you, I found out some like weird things like he basically wrote the melody to uh, the Ode to Joy, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. There's a Mozart piece that is note for note, <laughs> the, exactly the same melody that came before. So it's like, I was like, wow, that's you know, not that one widely publicized. <laughs> but, um, so you've done Mozart? Have you done any others? done Mozart. I just uh, started on Bach, so mm -hmm. my second of, of these. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's a fun. If you have like time to kill any of you people out there, uh, I recommend it. You know, it's, uh, Are you going to try Haydn? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm, he's, he's, come. He was one of the most prolific, wasn't he? He was, and yes. Bach's fairly prolific, too. But, yeah. People who don't like him so much say it all sounds the same. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> kind of like my music for season one of the last what? No, yeah, yeah, I'm right, just, music. Uh, okay, no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. Well, so. that's kind of funny. Do you ever get worried you're going to plagiarize something? <laughs> mm. Well, actually, that's funny because uh, yeah, yeah, that that sort of uh, that's always a worry when, when you're writing or, or doing music. I think yeah. you just you've you, got to be influenced, but you're yeah, also, right. Yeah, I think you, you just, be original. <laughs> I think you just have to you know keep your antennae tuned as as finely as finely tuned as possible, and just kind of hope that you are aware of something if it in the early stages so you don't uh, go there as it were but uh yeah you can't you can't avoid that <laughs>